How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be sharing Stab of Hades from Mix Max. There is not a lot going on on the package. Some cool artwork, but nothing by way of instructions or figure shots. Inside the box, you have a tray for weapons. And you also have the clam with the figure. Three additional pairs of hands, two additional head portraits and the figure itself inside the packaging. Quick look at the accessories. All his guns, his blades, his staff, the portraits, the hands, a couple of extra grenades there. All right, let's take a close look at Stab of Hades, AKA Deathstroke, AKA Slade Wilson. We're starting out in a dynamic pose here. We have the double jointed elbow, articulated and activated, reaching for the katana in the back. When I articulate it that way, as you can see here, there is a slight bit of the buck exposed where the fabric, I guess, got pulled a little bit too far down. Uh, I anticipate when I bring the arm back down that the cloth will slide right back into this armor piece. So we'll look for that when we get to it. Uh, on the other side, we have the shoulder articulated backwards so that he can reach for his pistol, which is conveniently located in that holster on his right thigh. Very cool there. Also, on the left side, he has his dagger. And looking at the back, you see that he has a slot here for his katana in the back. And there are no camera tricks. He's actually holding on to that katana, uh, reaching for it and pulling it or sheathing it either way. Some cool details on the armor, I thought, uh, were the fact that these thigh armor pieces are hovering over the pants on the thigh. Very nice on both sides. This sheath and pouch actually are just kind of like wedged onto this thigh armor portion. So I thought that was cool, right? Well, you have some options with that. And on this side, the holster is attached through some little plastic buckles, you know, so that one doesn't slide down. So I thought that was some cool little detail there. Uh, in terms of the shoulder pauldrons, they're attached via some elastic. So they're gonna give you a lot of movement and they're not gonna get in the way of articulation when we take a close look at that. Same is true for this one here on this side. Very, very nice little touch there. One little area, I guess a little nitpick for me with the design and the mold. I get it that this is the traditional look for Deathstroke or Stab of Hades here in this case by Mix Max. Uh, but I wish the plastic were way more pliable and that it gave way for articulation because you're not gonna get any movement up on that ankle. And because of the design here being so bulky, you're not going to get any rotation down or movement down with the ankle. You know, very minimal movement there. So that's just a little nitpick on my part. But, you know, could be just a personal preference thing. All right. So another cool thing I thought about the deco was, and you can see for yourself, just the way that light bounces off of all of the different surfaces. You know, the subtle contrast here between silver and flat gray on that fi fabric, I thought that was really cool. The way the orange has reflective surfaces, but then also has weathered surfaces or, or weather weathered patches, I should say. I thought that was really nice. And this texture here, you know, with the blue and then the silver accents. Very, very nice. I am feeling his presence. And he has a size to him that we'll take a close look at when we do our uh, themed comparison. So let's go ahead and look at some of the accessories. We know that he has his katana. And you see how I just pulled that right out, no problem. I'm going to articulate that hand back down. And I'm going to rotate and see if it covered back up. Yep. As expected, it was slid right back into the under portion of the armor very cool that means that it was designed to move with the figure and not hinder articulation this katana itself has a really nice weathered look to it and it comes with its own sheath he has his staff he comes with a pair of grenades this behemoth of a sniper rifle which has the articulating stand there, comes with an assault rifle and another. And 
his head portraits. I'm really digging this look, the other head portrait, which I didn't show you the flails or the flailing fabric on the back of this portrait. So you kind of just attach it, and I really like that. I think that's really cool. He has his pistol. And I really like this thing. And I love that metallic finish that it has on it with the weathering effect that it has. Also very super cool. In terms of articulation, you're going to get great tilt with the head. No question about it. You're going to get great down. You're going to get some wobble. And you're going to get great upward look. You don't have butterfly joints in the shoulders. But you will get rotation at the shoulder. Despite the fabric, where you can really get his hands angled upward. Very, very nice. You know, like touchdown kind of a situation. You do have a cut at the bicep. You do have the forearms that are independent and are will swivel and rotate for you. And then you have the double peg ball that'll give you all kind of great movement. At the waist, you have rotation. You have wobble. About that much crunch. You do not have... An upper diaphragm cut and you do not have an ab crunch but otherwise you do get pretty good turn left and right with the waist but you're not going to get full rotation because he's wearing the undersuit so i haven't forced it because i don't want to risk it in terms of the legs you're going to get about this much split and not much more you're going to get about an a pattern underneath that split there is an upper thigh uh, upper thigh cut you do have your double jointed knee but because of all the heavy armor, it's going to give you about that much backward. You have rotation here at the ankle. You have rotation here at the calf. But you're not going to get a lot of up and down, as I mentioned, articulation out of the ankle. And you don't really have a very generous rocker either. Just manipulating him in, in my hands. He does feel sturdy. He does feel durable. I don't have much wobbling or wiggling going on anywhere with the joints. They feel pretty tight, pretty secure. So I'm impressed with all of that. You saw that he was able to reach back for his katana and he was able to reach back here for his pistol. So that is really impressive. Let's see how he poses with some of his pistols or rifles. Nice little look there with his pistol. Swapped out head portrait with the one exposed eye. I gotta tell you that double ball peg that is there for the swapping of the heads it is so small that it is really tough to pop in and out, you know, so be careful also. And it might like fl fly out of your hands if you if you don't hold it the exact right way because it is really tiny. I also have the tassels there attached to the back of that helmet. Really nice. Give you a look from the other side. Very, very cool. Let's try another pose. All right. Very nice shot of him with his rifle. He has it resting in his hand there, very cool. I'm really digging that metallic blue on his new head portrait or the additional head portrait, very nice. That shoulder pauldron with the additional shells looks really, really cool. Oops, I forgot to put his pistol. There we go, now he's ready. Now he's ready for business. Very nice. Let's take another look at another pose. Not quite the iconic pose of Conan, but the closest approximation I'm willing to stress over today with Stab of Hades. Very, very nice. From the other side, I love all the busyness on the armor elements, the weapons, the shells, the holsters, the pouches. Very, very cool. This is the skull version of the head. And a quick transition right into another action pose and play. He is an awesome looking fig. He feels great to the touch, the textures, the way he's constructed, the fabrics, the plastics. Really, really great. I would totally say that this figure is comparable to Mezco quality. 100%, 100%, not over 
complimenting them at all. And since we're in that place, let's go ahead and segue into today's comparison. I'm gonna bring out a few different figs to give you some sense of size and scale. Here I'm with a Mesco King T'Challa. Now we know Mescos come in all kinds of scales and sizes, but for today I'll bring out my T'Challa because I feel like I like the soft goods on him and how snug they fit that fig. And there you have a sense for exactly how big our uh, stab of Hades actually is. And next up, GW Toys G001, custom figure body. So you can kind of like see how they're scaling there. 112 V Toys figure body so that you can kind of like continue to see how these guys are all scaling here. And you can see that Stab of Hades does have broader shoulders, certainly, and he is taller than the group that we have in front of us here. Very, very cool. I'm gonna bring our custom figures out to the side, and I'm gonna bring out a amazing Yamaguchi Vivoltec version two Deadpool. So you can kind of get a sense for how they're scaling there. Bring my T'Challa back in frame. Very cool. Very cool. I will bring out a Super 7 Thulsa Doom to kind of like give you a sense of how he scales compared to Ultimates. So now you can see that Thulsa Doom is taller than Stab of Hades and in the Ultimates line. And look at how gorgeous all that deco is. And I thought that the deco in these three gentlemen here was complimentary because it's so advanced all across. So very, very nice, very chill. I'm gonna bring these gentlemen over to the side. And actually, I will bring in a another Revolt Tech fig, which I thought complimented Stab of Hades in his deco appeal, was my uh, cable. And I really feel the color contrast there, and I love the color contrast there and that tactical armor feel. Very, very nice, very cool. I'll bring out my Mafex Dark Knight Returns. Batman. So you can get a sense for how we're scaling here. There we go. And I'll also bring out my Mafex Batman Hush. just to give you a different look at a slightly slimmer Batman. Very nice. Have Deadpool peeking over there. We've got Cable towering over people over here. Bring Thulsa Doom back in over here. Because he is probably the baddest baddie in the history of baddies. And if you want to see how Stab of Haiti scales against another large 1 12th scale figure. Here is a look at my Zazar from Mythic Legions. Nice little ensemble. Stab of Hades. Uh, overall, I'm happy with the purchase. I love how he looks. I think he's going to complement my Mesco collection really, really nicely. I'm feeling all of the different textures and accessories and that tactical vibe. Um, very, very cool. Very, very happy with that purchase. I wish there was some more articulation going on in the torso area. And I wish that this design choice here by the boots would have been for a more pliable plastic. But other than that, great fig. Very, very cool. Very happy I picked them up. As always, everybody, it's a lot of fun taking time out to share the experience of exploring action figures and toys at my advanced age and taking that time out to share it with all of you. Until next time, everybody, take care. <laughs>